by Kripona. <clears throat> no, for the Zoom meeting. For the Zoom, for the recording. Yeah, thank you. Well, we welcome you all to our first Bible study of the year. But before we start, I've got two announcements to make that are very important. Um, first of all, <clears throat> We're having a major problem with our telephone line at the church. We can ring you, but when you ring us, the telephone rings, but when we pick it up, all we hear is a crackle. We don't hear what you've got to say. So Jack has very kindly been on to the people this afternoon who have phoned me and said, that they need to come out, they think, but they will have to send us an appointment, which we're still obviously waiting on. But in the meantime, they decided that they'd transfer all the landline calls to my mobile. So that sound is great, but apparently whenever somebody phones the landline, even on my mobile, I just get the crackling and it goes off. So, um, and uh, so it sounds maybe it's a problem at the exchange, I don't know. But anyway, um, what I'm asking you to do is for the foreseeable future, next week or so, if you just uh, make sure if you need to phone me, phone my mobile phone number. Okay, because if you phone me on the mobile phone number, I can talk to you. All right. And the second thing is, of course, on Sunday morning this week, we're very privileged because we've got three baby dedications this Sunday. Um, some of our um, recent people who've joined us, some of our asylum seekers, you know, they've been producing babies. And uh, so... Uh, that they've uh, asked about baby dedication and all the rest of it. And, and they've been to see me this morning to write all the names down to make sure I've got to learn how to pronounce them for Sunday morning. So we've got three baby dedications this coming Sunday morning. So something to rejoice in as well in the service this coming Sunday. Now, we're turning once again to the book of Jonah, chapter 2, and our 12th message in the series, in our studies in the book of Jonah. And tonight, we're looking at the title, The Commands, The Commands. And we will be concentrating our thoughts on Jonah chapter 2 verse 10 and the first two verses of chapter 3 but because we've not been in the book for a while uh, I think we need to read the whole of chapter 2 just to remind us where we left off just before Christmas and so let's commence our reading tonight then Jonah chapter 2 verse 1 then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The waters surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you in your, to your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice to you 
with the voice of thanksgiving, I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. Let's just pray. Father, we do thank you for the privilege of coming around your word. We do thank you, Lord, that there are so many things we can glean from your precious word. And now, Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit would guide me as I preach the word tonight, and that, Lord God, you may speak to all of our hearts in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, for anybody that has read or heard of the story of Jonah, and especially for us who've been studying the book of Jonah for weeks on end now, it will be plain for us all to see that Jonah was a man of God, a prophet of God, and a man that should have known better. But he sinned grievously against the Lord. And ultimately, his sin in running away from God, it endangered his own life at sea. And then being thrown into the sea, and as we read in his prayer, cast down to the bottoms of the mountains, to the very depths of the sea, it endangered his own life. It endangered the lives of the sailors that were on that same boat with him. It endangered the lives of others who perhaps were in other boats on the same sea, on the same time, in the storm. And he was in the most dangerous position as a believer because he was out of God's will. And that's always a dangerous place to be for any believer to be in. Because we also find that it would have caused a lot of distress. It could have caused a lot of loss for many people and a loss of business as well. Because if you look in chapter 1 and verse 5, you'll find that this boat they were traveling on we read, the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. So we find that not only has he endangered life and limb, but he's also cost individuals that were having their wares carried on that particular ship to cost them a small fortune as well. And ultimately, we see that running away from God, sinning against God, never reaps profitable results. It always wreaks havoc. It always wreaks damage. And it's never a good thing. But then in chapter two, we've noticed already where we spent three or four weeks into this prayer, that finally Jonah repents. And what a wonderful truth that Jonah repented. You see, repentance on man's part always brings action on God's part. Let me repeat that again. Repentance on man's part always brings action on God's part. In the Old Testament, there's a very simple promise, often prayed and often claimed, and it's a promise that if we will repent, God will perform an action. We see it in salvation, don't we? When we repent as sinners and uh, God then comes down with justifying grace, he saves us, 
he transforms us, and one day he will glorify us in the future. Because repentance on man's part always brings action on God's part. If we turn to the second book of Chronicles and chapter 14, there we have that verse that we so often pray and claim in 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Uh, is it? 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, isn't it? Sorry, I've got that the wrong way around in the notes. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. You see, repentance. Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That's the repentance. Then, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. You see, if only man would come down from his position of pride and from his perch of ambition and would humble himself in repentance, then many of the world's problems and in fact, many of our own problems will be solved overnight. Now, after Jonah repented, we find at the end of Jonah chapter two and in Jonah chapter three, that God gives two very clear commands. He gives the command to the great fish and he gives the, plan, the command to the prophet. Chapter 2, verse 10 of our reading. Let me just find Jonah again. Jonah chapter 2, verse 10. So the Lord spoke to the fish. And it vomited Jonah onto dry land. And that's the first command we're going to deal with tonight shortly. The command to be sick. And the second command we're going to look at is found in chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. And that's the command to speak. Because God said, it says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So the command to be sick and the command to speak. So first of all, then, we'll deal with the command to be sick. Now, it's a horrible thought, I know, but nevertheless, this is what God commanded. And it's a horrible thing when you read that verse 10 of chapter 2. It isn't a pleasant thing for the fish. Because it says, so the Lord spoke to the fish. And it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Now, we don't know what it looked like. And we don't know if Jonah was covered in vomit. We don't know if he came out clean and smelling of roses we don't know all that was entailed in that I don't even know if anyone else was on the beach and saw it I don't know if Jonah came out happy or if he came out sad or what he felt we're not told any of those things all we're told is that the Lord spoke to the fish and the fish vomited Jonah onto dry land. But isn't it interesting? Because, you know, we read in the book of Jonah four things about this fish. We find in chapter 1, verse 17, that the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. So we know this wasn't just an ordinary fish or an ordinary whale. 
but it was prepared specifically for this specific task to swallow up Jonah. And the Lord had prepared it. We find the second truth about the fish, that it was a great fish. So it certainly wasn't an ordinary fish. It must have been a mighty big thing. And we find third, a fish, uh, that the fish was obedient because the Lord had prepared the fish to swallow up Jonah. And that's exactly what it did. And in verse 10 of chapter two, we find the Lord spoke to the fish and the fish vomited Jonah. So it's very interesting to me that when we read of this prepared fish and this great fish, that it was an obedient fish. And when it came to the fish, the only disobedience that was found anywhere near that fish was man's disobedience that caused the fish to vomit. Isn't it interesting how man had spoiled creation yet again? You know, that was a principle found in God's word. God had created something very good. And, you know, all of creation doesn't have a problem in doing what it's commanded. The Lord Jesus on the lake commanded a storm to cease. The Lord in the book of Jonah commanded the storm to come. And it came. And then the Lord commanded it to cease again. And it stopped. And all of creation has no problem in obeying God. And yet, man does. It's only ever been man that's had a problem with God's commands. And ultimately, with the fall, man has scarred creation and made creation sick till this very day, because we find in the book of Romans, in chapter 8 and verse 22, that it says, we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. And yet we find that this prepared fish this great fish was an obedient fish. And at the end of the day, it had to be sick because of math. You know, the whole creation today is sick. It's sin sick because of man. And the scriptures tell us that creation groans and it's all because of the action of man at the fall. So when we look at this command to be sick, I want you to notice four things that I find in this 10th verse, because there's so much here, and I want you to notice it. Notice, first of all, the pain in that command, because we read that it vomited Jonah. Now, you know as well as I, and I hate to talk about it, but I need to, that being sick and vomiting or regurgitating is no fun at all. I'm sure all of us at some point have experienced being sick. It's an awful and a horrible feeling. And yet... To even feel nauseous is so awful. I'm on certain types of medication and some of my tablets make me feel very nauseous first thing in the morning. And it's awful. And yet we find that this fish vomits because it was his divine duty to vomit. It vomits because it was told to vomit. It does what was said to it. And that fish went through pain, you might put it, just to obey the will of its creator. 
You know, when we are serving God, folks, there are sometimes tasks that we don't want to do. There will be things that cause us pain, things that cause us grief. And the Lord may speak to us just like he spoke to that fish. And, you know, the consequence for that fish was to vomit out Jonah. And you know, sometimes the Lord might speak to your soul just to do something that you don't want to do. And it makes you very unhappy. It may cause you pain. It may cause you trouble. It may cause you tribulation. Turn back to Jonah chapter 1 and verse 2. Because God said to Jonah, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. In our earliest of studies, we noted that the Ninevites were a very barbarous people. And Jonah, if he'd have gone there, may have had to flee for his own life while he was there. And Jonah, you see, felt that if he did what the call of God was and did what God would have called him to do, it might have cost him. He might have had to suffer a bit of pain. So he ran in the opposite direction. But you know, whether something's uncomfortable or not, whether we desire to do it or not, if the Lord speaks... It's not our opinion that matters. It's only a matter of doing what the creator tells us to do. And that fish was told to vomit John. And so it vomited him. You know, friends, if we follow God, we will suffer and go through things that we don't want to go through. Sometimes even suffering persecution or suffering just for the fact that we've obeyed the voice of God and not the voice of man. You know, the scriptures tell us very clearly in the second book of Timothy and in chapter 3 and in verse 12, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And remember what Jesus himself actually said in Matthew chapter 10. And in the 33rd verse of Matthew 10, he said this, Whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. That's a warning. Now, for this fish to vomit, it was an unpleasant thing. But, you know, it would get over it, wouldn't it? And, you know, even after persecution... We have glory to look to and will get over it, even after persecution. You know, friends, it's far better to obey the Lord than the Lord to deny us before his Father, which is in heaven. When Jonah spoke, sorry, when, jo when Jehovah spoke, I'm thinking of the Lord Jesus Christ now. You know, Christ went through great pain on the cross for us. And often the command to obey can be a hard thing to do. But we not only see the pain involved in that command to be sick, we see the place concerning the command. Because the verse says to us, so the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. You see, God didn't tell the fish, well, just swim in him a bit 
and then vomit Jonah and let Jonah swim the rest of the way back to the shore. But we're told that the fish vomited Jonah onto dry land. Now, that's not convenient for a great big mighty fish, is it? In fact, we're not told anything more about this whale. So we don't even know whether it died on the shore. It may not have done. For all we know, that whale could have got stuck on that beach. It could have died in the process. It could have lost its life even in going right up to the dry land in order to vomit Jonah out so that he wouldn't get his feet wet. But we're told the fish vomited Jonah onto dry land. And that place was important. I want to say this. When you obey the voice of the creator, it might not only be painful, but it might be inconvenient. You may not want to do it. You know, isn't it strange when the Lord calls us to do something? It might cost you some time. It might mean you've got to put some money into it. It might mean you've got to put some effort into it. And yet, that whale was called to serve God on dry land. It's what you call a fish out of water, isn't it? You know, we read an awful lot in the Bible about serving God on dry land. And sometimes we feel it's a dearth. Come with me to Matthew chapter 3, for instance. In Matthew chapter 3, there we have and we read of John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness where there was a dearth and where there was a dryness. Matthew 3, 1 and 2. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In Acts chapter 8, Philip was in the middle of a great revival in Jerusalem. Souls were getting saved. Churches were being planted. And yet, in Acts chapter 8, in verse 26, it says an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip and said, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert, God said. This is desert. Now, I'm sure Philip didn't want to go where it was dry and barren and a dearth. He'd been in all the revival meetings. He wanted to stay in the big church. He wanted to stay where it was all happening. But, you know, God called him to dry land where there was dearth, a lack of growth, where it's out of season. Because, you know, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2, to preach the word in season and out of season. What about Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 3, where it says this. Isaiah 44 and verse 3. God gives a wonderful promise even in the desert because he says, For I will pour water on him that is thirsty and pour floods upon the dry ground. So, you see, we've seen the pain of the command. We've looked at the place of the command, but what about the puzzle of the command to be sick? Let's read our text again, because there's so much in this verse. The Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Now, if you and I were that fish, and we were given that task, I guess we would have moaned and we would have complained. 
And the reason why we would have moaned and complained was because in chapter 1, verse 17, the fish was told to swallow Jonah. Three days later, he's told to vomit him. And I guess that, you know, after giving that fish a great big meal, and then finding you're told to be sick and get rid of it, I'm sure, you know, if that fish should have had a mind like of its own, like you and I do, it would have said, why has the Lord told me to do that? It doesn't make sense. But, you know, in hindsight, as we read the word of God, it makes absolute sense, folks. Because that fish, the picture is reduced in size on the screen, Melody. Oh. That fish was transporting Jonah to a particular place, to a particular beach, so he could carry on in his ministry. But you see, that fish, poor fish, didn't understand the bigger plan of God. But nonetheless, God used that fish as a Bible cog in the plan of God. You know, many things in life will puzzle us and be a mystery to us. God will tell us to do one thing. The next day he might tell you to do the opposite. And we don't know why. But you see, friends, as I've said to you before, God always looks at the big picture. When we had an old transistor radio, when I was a lad, you could twiddle a button and you'd see the line moving all along. And you had the long wave and the short wave. And you know, friends, so often we just look in the short wave. But you know, God's looking at the long wave. He's looking at the bigger picture. I'm always thrilled with that hymn, I am not skilled to understand what God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at his right hand stands one who is my saviour. So there was the command, it was, it was a painful command, the place of the command, the puzzle of the command, and then the pleasure in the command. Because I don't know if ever you felt sick, and then being sick. But you know, after a while, you begin to feel a lot better, don't you? What was carrying all that pain and anxiety in you before you were sick is now out of you. So you begin to settle down and there's a certain pleasure in that. And you know, friends, when that Lord spoke, to that fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. I find it ultimately it's always better to do what the Lord commands. You know, in Jonah chapter one and verse three, we find Jonah arose to flee from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare. It cost him money. He went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, let alone the storm and the mighty tempest in verse 4 and a ship that was about to be broken up and uh, people, the mariners being afraid and the cabin to throw the cargo overboard on the ship. And then Jonah was grilled and he had that trial from the sailors. Friends, it didn't pay for Jonah to run from God. And you know, sometimes if only we would do the hard things that God tells us to do, we'd find great pleasure in service for God. It's always worth obeying God. In Matthew chapter 25, we read in verse 21, the parable of the talents, and then his Lord said to him, 
Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Obedience always paid. So basically, the Lord spoke to a fish and it did what it was told. But you know, sadly, we can't say that about the prophet. Men have been made in the image of God even. And yet it was the fish that was obedient and the prophet ran away from the Lord. But very quickly, the second command, the command to speak. Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. You know, it's interesting that we read that the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. We don't read that about the fish. Mind you, the fish didn't need telling twice. It just got on with the job. And yet the preacher, the man of God, had to be told twice. But you know, isn't it wonderful that our God is a God of second chances? You know, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our God is a God of second chances. In this second chapter, command there are four things but i'll be very brief on them all the repentance the mercy the service and the preaching the repentance because that same command is being repeated remember god had said to jonah in chapter one verse two arise go to nineveh that great city cry out against it for their wickedness has come up before me. Now in chapter 1, verse 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. And in chapter 3, verse 1, we find the word of the Lord came to Jonah, only this time, the second time. In chapter 3, verse 2, God said, Arise, go to Nineveh. That great city. And here in chapter 3, verse 2, he says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. And then, of course, in chapter 1, he's told to cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. And in chapter 3, verse 2, he's told, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. You know, friends, I want you to notice it's a wonderful thing, this repentance, because Jonah had already heard that exact command once, and the Lord gave that command the second time. After he's fully repented and admits he's wrong, Remember in chapter 2, verse 9, he said, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. And only after that repentance and rededication to service does the Lord bring the command the second time. Now, I want to say I believe that God was testing Jonah to see if his repentance was real. So he brings the command again. You know, it's easy and one thing to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I repent. Lord, I'll, I'll sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I'll pay what I've vowed, Lord, and be put back on dry land. But you know, it's another thing to do the command. And I believe that God was testing Jonah, you know, for Jonah to know himself whether he really meant what he'd said he'd do. 
You know, if Jonah was genuine about his prayer of repentance in chapter 2, then he would do what God commanded for the second time in chapter 3. But you know, the sad thing is today, people so often repent and don't mean it. How many times do we say, Lord, I repent, and then don't change the lifestyle? Or when God tells us to do something specifically, or commands us to do something in his word, that we have no interest in actually doing, because we don't really want to go that far. And how many people have prayed, Lord, I surrender all, we've sang it in the church, and then carried on as they did before. I believe God was testing Jonah. The proof wasn't needed for the Lord, because we're told in Samuel, God knows the heart. So, you know, God didn't need proof as to whether Jonah would obey him or not. God knew whether Jonah would obey him or not. But, you know, the proof wasn't needed for the Lord. It was needed for Jonah, and it was needed for all those surrounding people to know that Jonah had that testimony that he'd repented and that he was obeying the Lord God. You know, so often we like that promise in Proverbs where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean on to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your past. But we're perhaps not so familiar with what verse 3 and 4 says. It says in that chapter, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favour and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Very important verse, isn't it? Because the Lord is, com is concerned that others see our repentance and not just God. Secondly, the mercy in the command to speak because it came the second time. You know, friends, I want to thank God for being so merciful. So merciful in my life, so merciful in the scriptures because Time and time again in the Old Testament, what just a second time, a third time, a fourth time, a fifth time, a sixth time, and many, many times the children of Israel, when they repented, God gave them chance after chance, and thank God he still does today. Remember the commandments. They were written, the Ten Commandments were written on two tablets of stone. And because of sin, they were broken. But God in his mercy gave them again. And, you know, we've experienced God's mercy time and time again in our lives. I'm reminded of that beautiful scripture in um, the book of Lamentations. and. Uh, that wonderful scripture in Lamentations chapter 3. I'll just read it to you. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. What a merciful God. What a gracious God. But then thirdly, look at the service in the command to speak. Because in our text, God tells him to arise and go to Nineveh and to preach the word that I tell you. Now, you know, friends, it would have been a disaster for Jonah just to presume 
that the first call of God was good enough and he could just then go off his own bat. Because remember, Jonah had rebelled. And if Jonah had gone on his own without to Nineveh, for all he knew, God could have called somebody else to Nineveh to do the job that he failed to do. And maybe it wasn't God's will for Jonah to go to Nineveh anymore. It could have been the case. But, you know, God came the second time. And when the second call came, you know, so many people have ruined their lives because they've just presumed they knew what God wanted instead of seeking his face and seeking his word and getting a clear call from God. Because God, as I said, could have just had someone else waiting in the wings instead and sent them. You know, it says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, and verse 21, God had to say about some prophets, he said, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. You see, they hadn't stood in the counsel of God. And how many people... Even preaching in pulpits, they're not called of God. And you know, friends, when we're not called of God, it's a disaster because compromise and apostasy and false things set in. So it would have been a disaster for Jonah to presume. But thank God, God called a second time and told him to arise. And then lastly, and I'm through now, but the preaching in the command to speak. Because God said to Jonah in this verse, preach to it the message that I tell you. You know, Jonah wasn't just to preach what Jonah felt like preaching on. If Jonah had had his real way, knowing Jonah, he'd have had the whole city destroyed anyway. But you see, God had a plan to bring revival. And for those people of Nineveh at that time to repent. And so God said, speak the message that I tell you. See, preachers are like postmen. We only deliver the message that's been sent. <laughs> you know, it would be awful if your postman started going through your mail and saying, oh, well, I think she should have said this and crossed it out and wrote that in and said, and, oh, I think she should have said that. You know, preach the word because the postman delivers the letter, but he only delivers what the person's put in the message. And that's why we're told to preach the word and to preach Christ. What does it say in Isaiah chapter 21 and verse 10? The Lord said to the people on my threshing floor, the grain of my floor, that which I have heard from the Lord of hosts, Isaiah said, the God of Israel, that I have declared to you what I've heard from God. And then Acts chapter 20 and verse 27. This is what was said. Paul said, For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. And we must preach the whole counsel of God. That's why I preach the swallowing and I preach the vomit as well. And one last, I have one last scripture for you. James chapter 3 and verse 1. Very warning. Brethren, not let many of you become teachers knowing that we shall receive 
a stricter judgment. So let's learn from the obedience of the fish. Let's learn from the mistakes of Jonah that no matter what, repentance is the key. God is merciful to the repentant heart. And ultimately, what our job is to do is to preach in our district, in our family, in our job, to our friends, the preaching that God bids us, his word and nothing else. May God bless his word to our hearts for his name's sake. Father, bless your word to our hearts in Jesus' precious name.